and we use the different kinds of formal practice, particular methods uh, to support concentration, the bringing attention to the footsteps as we do walking meditation, the feet meeting the ground, mindfulness of breathing, the flow of the breath as we sit, The purpose of these exercises is to help ground the attention here in this present reality, this moment. The ongoing effort to sustain mindfulness through the actions of the day, through eating, coming and going, standing up, sitting down, carrying out our various work tasks. All of these efforts are towards sustaining a clarity of attention here in this present moment. We don't pay attention to the breath in order to fixate upon the breath. It's a means to an end. It's a tool that we use to help establish a quality of steady, open, unbiased awareness. As the retreat time progresses, as the mind becomes a little more quiet, steady, stable, it becomes somewhat easier to open the attention, keeping it receptive, spacious, alert, without using a particular concentration object. This is the purpose of the particular exercises or focal points like the breath or the footsteps is to support the establishment of a clear and open awareness, a mindful attention to the present. That's what it's for. And to the extent that it's possible, and this is the the aim of the the efforts that, that we make, to establish a strong, clear, receptive awareness, to be that very knowing, spacious quality that in each moment receives the patterns of experience, hearing, feeling, remembering, thinking, smelling, tasting, touching, being that open, spacious awareness that receives all experience, knows it, and lets it go. When we speak about taking refuge in Buddha, this is essentially what it's pointing to as an internal quality, choosing to be awake, choosing to be that aware, awake, knowing quality that receives all things without discrimination, lets go of all things without possessiveness. It knows all things, free of all clinging, free of grasping and rejecting. The practice of vipassana, the conscious development of the reflections on uncertainty, anicca, transiency, 
on dukkha, on satisfactoriness, incompleteness. Anatta, not self. These reflections are tools that we can use, tools to apply to help break up the habits of identification, the habits of taking the impermanent to be permanent, the unsatisfying to be satisfactory. To recognize that which we habitually think of as me and mine, this body, these thoughts, these memories, these plans, these decisions. supports the the realization that these cannot truly in any substantial way be who and what we are they have no owner so these reflections on anicca dukkha anatta they are tools that we can use to prize the grip open to to loosen the grip on experience Fearing the painful is going to keep going. Dreading that the pleasant is going to end. Cherishing the familiar that we take to be me and mine. There are ways of inquiring, supporting the, the practice of letting go, non-entanglement. So that then the heart participates fully and completely in each moment, receives and participates in this present reality, but without entanglement, without confusion, without identification. So these are not principles to believe in, but uh, they're a toolkit to apply to the flow of our experience to help break up the the habits of of a lifetime the conditioning the effects of our education our family our culture to loosen that to let there be some space around that so that more and more completely the heart can be open to the the flow of of all perception all experience to know it for exactly what it is and in that knowing to be the the peace of the mind's own nature this is taking refuge in dhamma being dhamma recognize realizing that every aspect of this body, this mind, this world has always been aspects of nature. That's all. No more, no less. This body, this mind, these are all attributes of the the single, multifaceted, natural order. Following the laws of nature formed by the patterns of nature. It's not personal. It's not individual. Taking refuge in Dhamma is being Dhamma, recognizing this is what we've always been. How could what is real, what we are, this body, this mind, ever have not been some aspect attribute of the of the natural order we have always been dhamma just didn't realize it the fundamental nature of mind has always been this universal reality this fundamental quality But because of the habits of identification, of assuming ourselves to be a a man or a woman, old or young, tall or short, 
clever or foolish. We miss that. So during the day, as we apply ourselves to the formal practice and the development, the ongoing sustaining of mindful awareness, incline the the mind towards this quality of, of open, unbiased, non-discriminating awareness that receives the pleasant, the painful, the neutral, the liked, the the disliked, the familiar, the unfamiliar, being that, that knowing space that receives all experience, knows it and lets it go. And the reflections on anicca, dukkha, anatta, these are ways that we can help to keep that space open, to help loosen the the points of of clinging, where the attention snags on I like, I don't like, I want more, I want to get away from, I can't bear this, I'm afraid of that, I want more of this one. When you see the mind grasping, caught up, chasing after Tanha Upadana Bhava, flowing into that, in that direction, into that particular object. Then we use the reflections of Anicca Dukkha Anatta to help counteract that flow, to help cease the outflow, to ask, is this changing? Is this ownable? Is this really 100% satisfying? Will this make me happy forever? Can this truly be owned? And in that inquiry, in that reflection, then the grasping ceases, the, the outflow stops. And then there's peace. Bhava nirodo nibbanang. When the becoming stops, what's experienced is peacefulness. Along with um, these particular methods that we've been speaking about so far, mindfulness of breathing or mindful walking and so on, there are many other objects, different methods we can use to help key the attention into this present reality. One of these uh, alternative objects or methods is to develop what is called inner listening, or listening to the inner sound. If you pay attention to the faculty of hearing, see if you can discern in the background a, a continuous, subtle, high-pitched ringing tone, like a, a white noise in the background of your hearing. For some people it's, uh, this is not apparent or it's difficult to discern. 
but for, for many, for others, it's, it's something that is not difficult to pick up, to perceive. So this inner sound, this continuous, high-pitched, ringing tone, like a subtle white noise, we can use the presence of this sound, so known as a nada in Sanskrit. The, the presence of this inner sound can be used as a meditation object. You can pay attention to it. Use it just as we use the presence of the breath. It doesn't begin or end. It's ever-present. It's non-personal. So we can develop this as a reference point, listening to the inner sound, both as we sit and carry out the formal meditation here in the hall, or if you develop it in a, a strong and consistent way, you can notice it as you're doing walking meditation, even as you're going about your daily tasks, or eating, lying down to rest. It's always here. Now for some people this can be a, uh, another helpful support for mindful awareness. Helping to remind us to be awake. To pay attention. Now see if you can discern this inner sound. There's no need to theorize about it or worry about it or feel that you're a failure if you can't hear it. But if it's discernible, then bring attention to that. Listen. Just to let the, the presence of that sound, that inner vibration, fill the, the space of awareness. Notice how that even though you you can hear the sound of my voice, the nada, the inner sound is going on in the background. Or if we hear a pigeon, the sound of a plane, the inner sound still persists. It's still there like a, a backdrop of all experience. And for some people it's a very obvious presence. For others it's impossible to, to discern. Nothing is apparent, either as a sound or as a physical sensation or, or anything. So if that's the case, if there's nothing that you can perceive of this, it's not apparent at all, then don't worry, that's just... The, the way things are arranged, how you're made up, we just use the, the feeling of the breath, or the posture of the body as reference points. But if it is discernible, if it's a, a quality that you can perceive, then this is a, another support for, for mindfulness and awareness. Encouraging the quality of wakefulness, alertness. Again, we don't have to theorize what it might be or what to call it. 
we can simply use its presence, its nature, as a way to help us develop uh, the most skillful attitude of attention, openness. Unentangled participating in this moment. <laughs> 